Hi, a while back I bought a kit multi-rotor with a turnigy frame, but it cracked after a small crash. I looked up at replacement frames, but they are either small or expensive. Deep down, a multi-rotor frame is just a structure to keep all the different parts all together, so I decided to have a go and try to build one myself. I have access to a 3D printer, and this is a pretty good example of a project that can benefit from 3D printing. Every time something breaks, you can just print replacements that are exactly the same as the original. This is the model I came up with. Let's start with the motor mounting pad. There are four holes that line up perfectly with the threads in my motors. This is upside down so the flat surface rests in the printer bed. On this side, there is a big hole. This is where the arm will go. This part here will go in the middle of the arm. It serves as both an ESC support and as a landing foot. The arm tube will finally go in this part. There are four vertical holes that will be used to attach the arm to the frame itself. This is the lower plate of the frame. There are four mounting holes for each of the four arms. The top of the plate is identical, but with slight different holes for the next part. This part is where the flight controller will be mounted. The flight controller sits roughly at the same height as the propellers in the motors. On the other side, I left the space and holes to mount the remote control receiver and sensors. I also added this structure to mount one of the antennas horizontally and the other vertically. Finally, on top, I made this holder to place the battery inside. Regarding the hardware, I will be using four of these cheap Turnigy motors. This will be a big multi-rotor, more than 70 cm diagonally, so I could use motors with more torque, but these should still be fine. I will also use the matching 20 amp speed controllers from Turnigy. However, I replaced the original firmware with Simon Case. Regarding the flight controller, I will use this KK215 board. It doesn't really have any fancy features, but it's still a great learning platform. The next step is to print the required parts. I will print two of the arms in yellow and two in blue, hopefully making it easier to know which direction is front. The rest of the parts will be transparent for no special reason. These are all the printed parts, plus the four pieces of 20mm VD electrical conduit. Electrical conduit should be a good match. It is very lightweight and it should allow a bit of flexing, hopefully reducing vibrations. It is also very cheap, it cost me something like 30 cents per meter. The arms will be mounted like this. On one end, the mount for the frame. In the middle, the ESC support. And on the other end, the motor mounting pad. I will glue the arm together using epoxy. After curing, it will be really strong. This is my first attempt, so I will be cautious and use a large amount of adhesive to make sure it won't come apart during flight. Now, I just have to do the same for the three other arms. Meanwhile, I will attach the battery holder to the lower plate. On hindsight, four stainless steel screws are a bit overkill, but at least I know it's solid.
I used 5 minute epoxy, so a couple of hours later it should be solid enough to start assembling everything. I will start by attaching the arms to the inner frame. I actually made a mistake, and as you can see in the video, I mounted the four arms upside down. Sorry about that, the landing pads should be pointing down, not up. I've corrected the previous mistake, the landing feet are pointing down now. These four screws will connect the upper to the lower part of the frame. Now that the frame is assembled, I'll mount the motors. Next is the speed controller. If you don't know how to wire a motor to an ESC, just connect all the wires randomly. If it doesn't turn in the right direction, just switch two of the three wires and it will turn the other way. I have mounted all of the motors on the SC and I also installed the power cable. Now I will put the flight controller in place. And finally I will secure the radio receiver and the battery voltage transmitter. This battery voltage transmitter connects to my radio receiver and it transmits back to my remote control the current battery voltage. If your receiver has two antennas, you should mount one horizontally and the other vertically. This should reduce the chances of losing the transmitter signal.
Now the first flight. The flight controller was configured with very conservative values, so it should be stable even if it's not very agile. I'll be a bit more aggressive with the controls now to see how it responds. Now that it flies correctly, I decided I wanted the camera support. This is what I came up with. This lower part is where the camera will be attached, via a standard 1 quarter inch diameter 20 thread per inch screw. This part is attached to the next via two lateral screws. They will also be used as the hinge to set the angle of the camera. The next part is also attached with two screws and has four support poles to fit four rubber shock absorbers. I will repurpose the rubber shock absorbers from an old CD-ROM drive. This will hopefully reduce vibrations. The rubber will fit between these two parts. Finally, the upper part will be the one that is attached to the multi-rotor frame. With the camera support protruding, I will be using this bucket to take off and land. I'm using two batteries in parallel because they are both old and not in very good health anymore. This is a test flight with the camera underneath. Next, I will show you the footage from flight. This is video recorded from the camera in the multi-rotor. Bear in mind that this is a very low cost camera, the image will be rather mediocre, but you will see that the vibrations are pretty well controlled. It was a very windy day, so I will be fighting a bit the wind and there will be noise, but it's a pretty good test. If you want to build something like this, I will link the files in the video description.